Let's talk about Finland because last time we met, uh, you were playing in Helsinki, which mm-hmm. actually was the, was the first time you played in Finland. Yep. Uh, first of all, what kind of experiences or memories you have from that one? Because it was pretty much a sold out show. We uh, pretty much. It, that was it was a sold out show. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <Yeah. laughs> like any, in all honest, honesty, it was that, so. I, we had so much fun. It, we we had we had a blast in Helsinki. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we can mm. we can go on about that. I know you got not much time left, but uh, uh, he uh, wants us to go true, on about. No, that. no, no, no. The city, the city, like we <laughs> we had a, we were there for three or four days. We had a lot of fun, um, but f- t- for us, it was the first time we were there. Mm. Like that's ridiculous. It's still, and I like that. It's still like that's really humbling to to us when we come there. We sell out an arena. And we're like, we've never been here mm. before. So we were just like blown away and yeah, tru- we, truly grateful. But we and we we worked hard that night too. Like we tried to give a really good show. We tried to put on a really good show, and the audience was fantastic. And they were working. And there was there was love. There was a lot of love. Like we were like. We love you guys, and mm. thank you so much for supporting us, and thank you for coming out tonight. And they were just showering us with love, and and um, Brad, um, who's just off camera, um, our our bartender on stage, <laughs> um, he uh, he came out and uh, filmed uh, some of the performance from that show, and we tweeted it um, so the world could see how amazing the crowd was that yeah. night. And it was just undeniable. Like the crowd was f- just fantastic. Mm. And anytime someone says Helsinki, right away we're like, yeah, yeah Helsinki. My yeah. wife came to visit Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. We oh, the whole, your wife got we kicked a hole in the fucking town that night. It was. <laughs> my wife got really drunk. We both did. Yeah. Holy yeah. good. Uh-huh. Yeah, but you know that's a typical Finnish way. When you go out, yeah, you have is. to get really pissed. I was supposed to go to a sauna. I guess they said they mm. wanted us to go out there. Like you gotta have the Finnish experience. Drink some booze. Go out to a sauna. Go to sauna. A sauna? You got sauna? A sauna? A sauna. 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 Yeah. But you get really drunk and then you get in a sauna. Yeah, of course. And then we fall fall asleep and then we die there. So it's a typical, <laughs> typical way to go. Too. Yeah. How'd you die? Sauna. A- around oh, around the terrible. world. Everywhere else in the world it says don't drink alcohol and yeah. get into a sauna. But then they're like, you, you, what's your beer? Bring it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's actually the only place where Finnish guys talk with each other when they go to sauna and have like 10 beers and then they start talking to each other. So it's like a therapy for men. Exactly. Finland. It's like a sweat lodge. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get it. Yeah, yeah. I know this, every, every single interview asks you this, but I'm gonna be the one who asks this once again about bashing. Because like, mm. there's there's been lack of a fashion that people like to criticize Nickelback. Mm-hmm. And it's like constantly. It's like when you release an album, there's always people who like to bash you for no reason. And there was this guy even in the UK who st- <laughs> who tried to stop you playing in London and stuff like that. Do you ever? Hard. Yeah. Do you ever take it personally? <laughs> Does it bother you? No. No. I think earlier on it might have, but these days, like when you start out, you have thinner skin. Mm. You got thick skin. It, every band gets this stuff, and yeah. I mean, we make it a little more, but whatever. Um, my brother. Uh, uh, Mike, the bass player yeah. in the band, um, he hangs out with James Hetfield a lot in Maui. So the two of them hang out a lot together, and um, you know, right when you think that you're the only one who gets it, the backlash. Mm. You know, Mike's like, "Oh no, James pretty much thinks the entire world hates him." <laughs> I'm like, "Really? Wow! Yeah, everybody suddenly." Knows. I don't feel so bad anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, it goes with the territory. You, it kind, it kind of does. Yeah. I think we've talked, like you said, we've talked to other bands. Mm. Coldplay gets it. Mm. Whatever. You guys have tons of hits. You've achieved cool things. What b- would be the mark you would like to leave to the world at some point when there's no Nickelback anymore? <sighs> um, I guess the one thing we want to leave is. Um, I would l- I would like when people hear the songs, a, even one song of ours, mm. that they think back, uh, truly think back to a, a, a like a good time, yeah. a happy time. You know, you ever hear that song where you just kind of like smile? You're like, what whatever the moment was in your life, that's what it's like for me when I listen to songs. Like I just kind of oh, I remember where I was, I remember what I was doing. Uh, that's a trigger for me. Yeah. And that, and that band is part of my life. I'll never meet that band, but they're part of my life. That would be nice if we could 
be that for somebody. I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. Much along the same lines of your question, a friend of mine was saying, as long as there is music being played, your music will now be you know, forever in the history of music. Mm. How does that feel? And that was just like... That blows my mind. Uh, kind yeah. of blew my mind. I was <laughs> thinking to myself, I can't imagine like a hundred years from now somebody enjoying uh, one of our songs, but I'm sure Beethoven thought the same thing, mm. you know? Um, Did you just compare us to Beethoven? No, <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> someone who's been around for that, that amount of time. You know. Um, and as I was thinking about it, right <laughs> when I was thinking about it, I was like, you already well, said it, it's on tape. I really, I really hope that we, oh, we just didn't did <laughs> compare myself to the greatness of Beethoven, but, um, um yeah, no, no. but, uh, it's, it's daunting. It makes you feel small, mm. um, to have created something that could be enjoyed slash hated <laughs> for hundreds of years. Um, it's, hum it's humbling. It is humbling. Mm. It's humbling it's, in a business full like, of egos. Yeah, and um, and I, I would love to somehow hear what somebody would say about some of the songs that we've written you know, a hundred years from now, how they would respond to it or think about it or... Mm. And I just, I think that's wonderful, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze your brain. Yeah. And I'm gonna bring you back a hundred years from now. You're, I'll be around. How are you gonna bring me I've back? I've already got an arrangement <laughs> to freeze my brain and then it's complicated. We'll talk in a hundred years. Didn't Walt Disney do that? That's what I heard. He's in but, a basement somewhere. But if he didn't do it right, wasn't it kind of all for now? Imagine he was like, I'll, uh, I'll see you all very soon. He's like, how did I end up in a woman's body? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. All this for yeah. nothing. Couldn't bring back your body, but we've got your consciousness. <laughs> uh, female donor was the best we could do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a great way to end this interview. Yeah, thanks thanks so a lot, guys. Buddy, it was thanks, a pleasure. Man. Thank you.